people that you are working with. That's true. I want you to say one thing about leadership. Leadership, to be a leader, isn't only the person who stands up in front of everybody and convinces everyone. To be a leader is also the person who is part of the group and encourages the group to move forward. I read recently an article about how a good follower is also a good leader. So if I am someone that identifies at my university a professor who has really good ideas and wants to push their ideas forward, and I go and support that person, that makes me a good leader too because I am supporting someone that I believe in with good ideas. So, you know, we often think about leadership as the person up at the front who's talking, the president or the professor or whatever, but actually being able to work in a team is also a strong sign of good leadership. Being able to identify good ideas and help a group work forward. Those are all characteristics of, of leadership that I think is important to recognize and talk about. So for two minutes back in your group, I want you to think about the problem that you identified and the solutions and think about what types of leaders could help solve those problems. Just very quickly. Very quickly, in your groups, think about the problem that you identified and list one or two or three characteristics or types of leaders that could help you. The problem that you identified before. So in your... Yeah. We think about this 
uh, this meeting uh, we think about uh, environment, but uh, we we many many uh, include the garbage and paper 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 wash and fish and light and atomic uh, air pollution. But any any anybody does it. It is very, it is very luxury, but it is not uh, normal environment. Uh, I want to say that the, uh, if you if we need think about environmental death, uh, we should we should change this this situation this situation at first at top then in. Each, 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 each. <laughs> so here, yeah. each part and change. And first, this situation will change. I don't say. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect, actually. Yeah. Exactly what we were talking about over at that table, about how for leadership, sometimes you have to act first for yourself, right? So you don't use the garbage and you don't you clean it up yourself, and by demonstrating yourself, then you become a leader for others. So we have to change first, change and change it for others. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. We are older.
people together for a common cause and facilitate movement. Okay, I'm almost done. Finally, I just want to show you some steps that we at ISD have. It seems quite simple, actually, but we find that it works quite well for making a strategy to make change and have impact. So we have talked about the first couple steps, and I will just go through the rest. And then after, I will show you a website where there is some online training that you can do on your own time about having an impact and making change. So we call this an impact strategy. So if you're going to write an impact strategy or have a strategy for making the change that you want, the steps that we follow are, first of all, identify what the change that you want to happen is. So make a, a simple change statement. You all did this in your tables, what you want to change. The second thing we call is relationship management. So who are the key people that you need to work with to make that change happen? Do you need to work with the president? Do you need to work with student groups? Do you need to work with teachers? You have to identify who the main people are that can help you make the change that you want to make. And then what kind of leaders do you need? So do you need people that are confident to go and talk to the teachers? Do you need people that can help to organize students? Do you need people that can do some technical analysis to get the numbers? What kind of people do you need to do what you have to do? Step three is uh, not what we call knowledge management. So that's what information do you need? Do you need the numbers of how much energy your university uses? Do you need to know about how much garbage needs to be picked up every day? What do you need to know so that you can present that to the people? Step four is uh, what we call opportunity management. There are always opportunities for communications, for consensus building that you can take advantage of. So I, for example, was coming to the Conservation Congress anyway. It was an opportunity for me to come and work with Dejayak and be here and talk to you as well. So what opportunities can we take? Maybe your university is having a big workshop or meeting about something else. Maybe you can try and get some green initiatives on the agenda. Or get them to think about being more environmental as part of the planning of the meeting. Are there opportunities that you can take to push your needs in your agenda? And then, of course, we always need to learn from what we're doing so that we can adapt and make it better for the future. So it's always good when you're writing a strategy to have some kind of monitoring so that if we say, okay, we want to form five student groups by the end of the year and we want 25 people, so you have goals and then by the end of the year you check, okay, we did four. Why did we only do four? Was that good enough? Or could have we done something to make more. So you always want to have some kind of monitoring so that you can improve and make things better as part of your change management strategy. So that's the end of my presentation. I want to thank you all for working together in groups and, and thinking this through. I, as I'm presenting, I always think it sounds so simple. It's much more simple to say it than it is to do it. And I think you are all clearly leaders because you're here. You're all engaged and interested and doing great things, and I want to congratulate you for that. Thank you for coming, and thank you for being the leaders that you are. Um, and I just want to point, ah, point out that for ISD, we have some online learning, some where you can go and do some, some training about what I talked about today, and that's the website. So later when you go home and have some time, you can go to that website and there's some, particularly if you look at impact strategy, the steps for an impact strategy, it's all there. So thank you very much. I very much appreciate it.
you so much for your nice talk and the very helpful talk. So we went, you know, visit this IIS and learn more about the leadership because we want to real, we really want to be a good leader for conserve for conserving our nature because this is only a plan for us. Not to. Not to. Not to. Not to. Not to. So, so, so very good. You know, because you know, we just know about what we are doing for this uh, uh, this conserve our nature, but uh, we don't have much time for learning about this leadership. But it's quite different, but very impact. So we want to be a very good person who make big impact yes. <laughs> to the student, to the friends. Yes. So, uh, anybody has some question or uh, some comments? Anything? Okay, please. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you also. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. So we thank, you know, please give a big thanks to the beautiful call. Home 
all places we are in. We will not underestimate the effect of one single person and we acknowledge the fact that when one person becomes changed his or her family, friends, schools, and furthermore, the community and nation and the whole world will be changed with the resolution, me first. First, we university students declare that we will practice the 10 environmental commandments of Dejai, which contains concrete and detailed practices. We acknowledge the fact that 